The Dallas Mavericks are coming off of a dominant 40-point victory over the Portland Trailblazers, avenging a narrow loss to Portland just a few nights earlier. Now, in this game, we saw peak. I say peak. We actually don't know what the peak is, but we saw good Luka Doncic as he goes nutso to the tune of 37 points. Brother didn't even need to play the fourth quarter. Started out the game 8 of 8 on threes. That ties a career high for most threes made in a game for Luka. In 30 minutes, gives you 37, 7, and 4 on 13 of 19 shooting. 8 of 9 from 3. But alas, if there is one blemish, the trend continues. Luka cannot shoot threes and free throws well in the same game. He just can't do it. It's physically impossible. Either the long range shot works or the short range does. I say short range, it's mid range, mid range shot. Luca goes three of six at the line. Pfft, terrible game, just garbage. Can't even look at this team sometimes. But the point is, Dallas gets a 132 to 92 victory here. Weird, a weird thing happens when you have Dwight Powell make more three pointers in a game than Damian Lillard. That's very, very unusual, very almost uncomfortable. Like, I feel weird that that was a fact and a reality in this situation. But regardless, Dallas gets back on track a little bit. The last loss they had to Portland a couple nights ago really, really hurt. Even though there's like 29 games now left in the season, really hurt their ability to move forward um, when you look at some of the schedule. Although, as we'll get to in a moment, there is another development that happened elsewhere in the league that will impact not one, but two games coming up in the next month. So we'll get to that. But in this game, you get a very, very good Luka performance that really masks a not-so-great KP performance. KP appears, we talk about this, the highs and lows of KP. He seems more in his head the past few weeks. I mean, you see those flares. You see those flashes where you're like, oh, yeah. Good KP, dude's a monster. You're seeing the inconsistency, and it's it's almost brutal. Like, I'm, I'm losing my faith that you can ever find consistent KP, but because of his contract and his potential value, it's not a guy you ever sell low on. So if you're not going to be able to move him as like a centerpiece in some major deal, you're not going to move him, and I don't think Dallas is going to move him. So with that being said, KP, 12 points, 8 boards, 3 of 7 shooting. That's not a lot of looks, by the way. Only 7 shots? I understand Luka went nutso, but 7 shots for KP, 4 of which were 3s. I understand KP's not a guy that's great at creating his own offense, you know, particularly off the dribble. He's capable, and we've seen the step backs and the crossovers. He can do a little bit, but we don't see a ton of it from him so consistently creating his own shot not necessarily a strong suit and while Luca is phenomenal there is kind of a feeling that he just treats all his teammates equally which how's that a bad thing well when you got a guy that's you know been in that borderline superstar status on his own before certainly obviously a former all-star and is supposed to be your robin you kind of hope that a guy orchestrating everything in your offense could get him involved more and get him going. That's one thing. And I understand when you're in a game that you're just an absolute flamethrower like Luka was, it's hard not to just be like heat checking yourself every trip down the court. And Luka was doing that with the step backs just nutso in this game. You want to see him try and get KP more involved. Seven shots for KP is not good enough, even with KP in a funk. He's got, he, he needs to know. You got to get KP going, not necessarily just for the right now. You have to get him out of his head so that come playoffs, you can be like that team that was in the bubble prior to the meniscus for KP, where the team where you and him both averaged 30 and 10. If you can do that... You're a nightmare for almost any team to deal with. I mean, offensively, you're just a nightmare for any team to deal with. But in general, you're a nightmare matchup for teams, even if you are a lower seed. 
not having KP dialed in makes it where it's like, all right, we'll throw everything at Luka and say that the other guys are going to have to beat us. In this game, those other guys were, hey, Richardson gave you 21. That's nice. 8 of 11 from the field, 2 of 4 from 3. Okay, Richardson's had some moments as of late. Dorian Finney-Smith, he gets the defensive player of the game belt. He gives you 13 and 5, 4 of 8 from the field, 3 of 6 from 3. There are actually teams that are interested in acquiring him. That doesn't mean that he's available from Dallas, but hey, they look at the contract, which we said when he signed it the summer before last, um, that that's a stupid value contract. $4 million this year, $4 million next year. Are you kidding me? That's incredible value for a very good 3 and D option. And so teams are interested, and they're trying to see, hey, uh, is that doable? The answer of which is probably no, unless we're really talking and not just like us selling you assets for scrap parts or something. I don't think Dorian Finney-Smith is going anywhere. His value and his contract are too good. And like as much as I do like the good we've seen from Josh Richardson, it is worth noting Richardson's going to be probably getting a sizable payday here this summer. And so it's like, all right, well, you have Dorian Finney-Smith who might not necessarily, pound for pound, I think is more versatile, but maybe not quite the same overall defender. Like in terms of lockdown, I'm going to stop this dude. Maybe not quite the same, but pound for pound, contract dollar for contract dollar, as if there's another dollar type in the scenario. Uh, Finney Smith is such phenomenal value. So I don't think he's going anywhere, but you get 13 and 5 out of him. Maxi gives you eight and seven, a very quiet, productive night for him. Again, his three-point shooting, very good. Two, only two of three in this game. I say only because he didn't get a lot of shots, but very productive. Probably the best catch and shooter, catch and shooter, catch and shoot three-point shooter on this team. Uh, previously, that was Dorian Finney-Smith, but Maxi has been phenomenal this year, shooting like 46, 47% from three. So that's going to remain open. That's going to keep his value very high. Jalen Brunson kind of continues to struggle a little bit. He's only four and three in 19 minutes, two of seven from the field. I'm hoping he can kind of sort through it. Again, this isn't a game where it's like a major indictment because you blew out a, a playoff team ahead of you. And so it doesn't look as bad, but there's a lot that you need to tinker with the rest of the roster. Like Luca and Richardson were both great in their production. You had several other guys give you serviceable production. You know, like I said, you got 13 out of Finney, 12 out of Porzingis is not what I would call serviceable points. You're like, oh, 12 points, that's cool. Oh, shit, that's KP? No, no, that's bad. It's kind of where that one's at. Uh, Hardaway gave you 11, only one of five from three, about a hair under 50% from the field, four of nine. Powell gets you 11 points. Again, very productive for him, four of four from the field, uh, one for one on threes. Very good for him. 13 minutes, 11 points from Dwight Powell. I will take that. Thank you very much. But I need to see more. This team has major things that still need to be addressed. And we keep talking about it. And now they've been linked in talks, according to Shams, from the Andre Drummond interest. But the Cavaliers want, I think, too much for Drummond. They're holding out hope that someone's going to pay a higher price for them. Because the Suns were also interested in Drummond, apparently, and that died down. So teams are floating around out there. And Dallas, after basically attempting and failing to you know, find a deal for him, basically said, like, all right, well, we're going to hang around and try and get him in the buyout market. The Lakers and Nets want him. Why do you think you can pick him up? Like, don't you get that super teams are a thing now? Everybody goes to one of two teams. And when the Nets were able to close the deal and get James Harden, that set it up where now everyone wants to go there. Blake Griffin's there. Now you're going to have another major guy go there. And, you know, they played together in Detroit, didn't they? They did. Yes, yes. For some reason, I, I swear, the pandemic threw off my timeline of things because there's a lost year in there and everything feels like forever ago. I have to remind myself, how long has this guy been where he was, like where he is? Okay, what was the crossover there? There's just a lot of moving pieces separated by a gap in my memory, which probably means I will develop a debilitating cognitive... Oh, no, I forgot the word. Oh, God, it's happening. 
No, thought I had it. Decline. That wasn't the word I was looking for, but we're gonna go with it because I'm already sad. It's been a long couple days. So, uh, the point being, Mavericks, very good win, very good statement win. And they've got some hope to move forward now in the next seven games, as All Things Mavs points out on Twitter. The next seven games are against 10 and 32 Minnesota, 19 and 22 Indiana, 18 and 24 New Orleans, 18 and 24 Oklahoma City, Boston, who's 21 and 21, 500. The Knicks, who are a game under 500, 21 and 22. This is like a, phew, this might as well be a playoff year for them. I mean, they're going to make it because the East is the East. But that's a, uh, it's funny that what would put you below the watermark in the West has you like right there in the thick of things in the East. It's just the leagues are not balanced, even though the top of the East is still quite good. And uh, Washington, 15 and 26. Washington had, what, a 18-game losing streak at one point? Yeah. No. Houston's on 20-plus. Yeah. Yeah. I need more caffeine. Point being, there's an opportunity to move forward. This is where, again, the strength of schedule down the stretch is favorable. Now, you got to make the most of it. That win, or excuse me, that loss a couple nights ago really hurt you. You're going to have to work to bounce back from it, and we'll see if they can. Uh, let me see here. One thing that will certainly help them in this attempt to bounce back is Luka Doncic, who has been insane. The past five games, 32.6 points per game. This is from Mavs Fan for Life on Twitter. 32.6 points per game the last five. 10 assists, 7.4 rebounds, 53% from the field, and 46% from beyond the arc. Good googly moogly. You want to look into a wider stretch here? The last 20 games, he's shooting 43% from three. That's not a small sample size. That's pretty, pretty big. But what about that transformation? What has turned the corner for Luka? We talked about how he had a slow start to the year, how he wasn't quite in game shape, looked a little bit like Luka Don Thick. Well, here's his numbers by the month this year. December, 23.8 points per game, 45.2 effective field goal percentage, 25% win percentage. That's uh, an expanded out thing where you're, Go into team success and how it translates. January, 28.3 points per game, 53.4% effective field goal percentage, 46.7%. That's at least better than it was. February, 30.3 points per game, 56.7% effective field goal percentage, 66.7% win percentage. March, the present. 31.1 points per game, 62.6% effective field goal percentage, and 71.4% win percentage. Yeah, yeah, I think Luca figured some things out. I think he turned the corner, and this team is suddenly looking more viable again. If they could, for the life of them, figure out the KP situation, this team is dangerous. Just by virtue of those two. If they're both dialed in, you're dangerous. You can talk about rebounding. You can talk about even defense at times. You can talk about limitations certain guys have and whether or not certain guys are living up to the... Oh, God, the cognitive thing is back. Living up to the contracts that you either already are paying them or that you're hoping to pay them in the case of Richardson moving forward. Discussions can be had there, but this team is a good and dangerous team if you got those two guys going. The problem is you got one guy absolutely going, and then you got one guy who's so hit or miss. Everything's a strikeout looking, or it's you know a home run that goes 700 feet. I don't know why I took a basketball discussion and turned it into baseball, but this has happened, and uh, I'm going to live with it. So, yeah, 
Mavericks, Mavericks are still hanging around, still, still uh, doing some things. The loss the other night hurt them, took a, an opportunity to really move up away. But at the very least, they still continue to hang around in the 8th seed, three games over 500. And let's see, they're a full game back of San Antonio, a game and a half back of the Trailblazers, so you really had an opportunity to cut into that, chasing the team at the 6th seed. Uh, the Nuggets are by, you know, they have the same record as the as the Blazers as well. So you had a chance there to further creep up. You had a chance to basically be right up in the grill of the five seed. And losing that game is critical. So now you're going to have, you know, while you have a lot of games as far as the head-to-head, the direct opportunities to knock them down and climb up, you're going to be just a little bit more limited. So I'm hopeful. (laughs) I'm hopeful, but... uh, that one hurt, and even though it was nice to get this one back and it's good to salvage something from the series, God knows if you had lost this one too, you would have been in a world of hurt, especially because the Warriors are one game behind you, then you would have been hard-pressed to climb back in perhaps, but we'll see. Regardless, that's it for my time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.